Oh, oh my God, The Damned. Oh, I just I just finished watching this movie last night. Why has it taken me so long to watch? Which what is one of the great, really great, unheralded British science fiction horror um, creepy films of the '60s, The Damned. Uh, it goes by the damned, but the, the really the full title are These Are the Damned, 1963, a Hammer uh, production. A Hammer production, really Hammer, you know, started out doing comedies, action, and then found their niche in the classic gothic horror. But they did, they produced a lot of really different types of movies, and The Damned, uh, I'll just keep, I'll just call it The Damned for, for shortness sake. The Damned really, uh, you know, was kind of, uh, fell by the wayside, you know? It was just not, it didn't fit into the to the role of the gothic, satanic core of, uh, of Hammer Horror. And so, really, it has been very uh, rarely seen over the years. And then recently, there has been a restored version of this. Uh, you know, produced, released on DVD in the UK first. Finally, it found itself a release in the US. But The Damned is a really, it's a hard film to, to categorize, you know? And it, and it, it almost is the, the, I hate doing a review of it because in some ways, the less you know about it going in, the more you're rewarded, I guess. That's the, it's it's one of those movies. It's one of those movies. I mean, you look at the I mean, look at the the poster art. The original poster art. I guess this is a quad release. Children of Ice and Darkness. They are the lurking unseen evil you dare not face alone. <laughs> come at your own risk if you come alone. Columbia Pictures The Damned, man. I mean, Joseph Losey. Uh oh my God, my God. Oh my, oh my, oh my. So, uh, the, the damned, uh, takes place in the, what is, at, at first looks like the idyllic countryside, uh, town of Weymouth, uh, in the UK, a, a British kind of country, you know, vacation, little, uh, sleepy little cottage where a, a young, uh, a young woman, meets an older American, and they, along with the young woman's uh, uh, brother, uh, kind of a, a hood, a teddy boy brother, played by Oliver Reed, all three of them, the woman, the older man, uh, the the young man, they all get uh, wrapped up in this uh, weird experimentation that the government is doing. Uh, with involving children who are the children of ice and darkness. Oh my God! McDonald Carey, the the, uh, the the older man, plays Simon, a retired insurance guy who seems to be wheeling around uh, uh, the Europe in his boat. Who meets Shirley Ann Field, uh, and uh, then Shirley Ann Field's brother is is played by the great Oliver Reed, all a young uh, 1963 Oliver Reed. I think this was even before he did the werewolf movie. I mean, this is like a young, a young, uh, you know, Oliver Reed with uh, still kind of uh, fresh, still kind of green, but still already you see the presence of Oliver Reed. And also in the mix is the the great uh, Vivica Linfors. Uh, you know, Vivica Linfors, who is a Swedish actress who eventually made her way to the U.S. and to New York, became a, I believe, a, got involved in New York theater, became an, an acting coach, an acting teacher. She's most well known, I think, uh, to most of us as the, the crazy old woman in that first uh, episode of Creep Show. So, uh, yeah, uh, man great but i mean the film directed by joseph losey the, the the great british director joseph losey it has a look it's a, it's a black and white scope film and oliver reed and his 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 gang of black leather black leather rah 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 there's a theme song they even said it's a, <laughs> it's a crazy black leather black leather blah 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 da, 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 da. the film is weird in that you know 
it's it's like the it's like those British films of the sixties and the seventies and the eighties where they were not really quite, kind of one genre because the film starts off as this very you know realistic kind of drama small town Teddy boys you know British crime a young woman trying to break away from her kind of um, uh, uncomfortably uh, close brothers Oliver Reed guy. And uh, and then it and then it switches and it gets, I guess, a little sci-fi. I guess you know I I guess I don't really want to talk about much of the sci-fi and, and element involved. But then they go and they meet these children, you know, and it things get a little bit weird. And so it was kind of remember it's the atomic age. It's the fifties and the sixties and. You know, there there is the the very real fear that we could blow ourselves up, and so this film kind of feeds on that kind of paranoia of identity and the children and what's going to happen to the children, and I don't know. It's it, you know, if you're a film, if you're a fan of like Quater Mass, if you're a fan of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, if you're a fan of those really. Uh, kind of eccentric, very uh, interesting uh, science fiction of the fifties and the sixties. This is this is kind of what it's about, you know. McDonald Carey, he was in, he was a Hollywood actor. They said he was in Shadow of the Doubt. Remember, he was the guy that in Shadow of the Doubt comes out of nowhere and steals the steals the girl in Shadow of the Doubt. In this film, he's he's kind of like he was forty nine years old, but he looks a lot older than forty nine, and it gets kind of lecherous what he does with that with that actress with that young girl. You know, it it looks kind of in modern day it would be a little bit uh, even back then it was a little 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 odd. Oh man, the ending of this film, the ending. I can, I'm not going to give it away, but ah. Uh, it, what a palate cleanser. What a palate cleanser to have that kind of a grim ending. And I love the way that it ends where I don't know what the name for this type of ending, but it's it's like it's like a what I call it like a trailing ending. Like it doesn't really end until the very, very end of the credits. This used to happen more often in films when they had really short credits, when they only had maybe one maybe, you know, a very short title, a, a scroll of credits. You know, and then, you know, produced by Columbia, and then boom, that's it. You could really do those really grim endings that were just, you know, up until the last frame. It's like, you're like, whoa, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? You know, grim ending, grim, realistic, authentic ending. You know, that's just like, oh, yeah. It would probably happen the way, wouldn't it? You know. So as I said, The Damned difficult to see for years and years and years this film was very very difficult to see it was released uh, uh in the uk in a pal dvd and that's actually what where i watched it from because i just got a uh, a multi-region a new multi-region sony multi-region blu-ray player popped in the 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 pal dvd it, it plays beautifully but it was released in the u.s very recently in the past few years the icons of suspense collection uh, Stop Me Before I Kill, Cash on the Man, The Snorkel, Maniac, Never Take Candy from a Stranger, and These Are the Damned. Uh, the, the Hammer films that don't really fit into any kind of, you know, kind of horror, uh, sci-fi categorization, they threw them in this collection, and I think it they, works really well. So, oh my God, The Damned. Uh, not much I can say about it. Kind of a, an action drama, science fiction hybrid in the tradition of those kind of topical movies they were making in the 60s about the end of the world, that we're going to blow ourselves up and stuff's going to happen with a very grim, grim... And I'd like to find an, a, a film which had this grim an ending, you know? That, w- that was like this movie, you know? I mean, like, Threads has a grim ending. I mean, The Day After has a grim ending. I mean, other films have grim... But th- something about this, this ending is so good. It almost, like, invalidates... I mean, it means, like, the movie's, like... You're watching the movie and it's going along, okay, this movie's a 7, this movie's an 8, this movie... And then the ending is just like, whoa! That's such a good ending. That makes the movie a 10, just on the strength of how good the ending and how it just it doesn't necessarily make you feel good but it just makes you feel whoa good ending good ending that's all i have to say (laughs) good ending